Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over how to create pro forma income statements for a new business. And the example we're going to use is Tasty Taco. Because this is a new business, we don't have historic data to rely upon. And you'll notice that there are a lot more um, assumptions. Uh, once we have established revenue, um, we have to make assumptions about growth in the future. And we're assuming that you will grow uh, by 10% in year two and 7% in, in uh, years three and four. Uh, in addition to that, we have make assumptions about operating strategy. So here are the um, uh, performer uh, assumptions for um, kitchen and also waste staff, as well as the owner. Um, cost of goods so again, all these uh, uh, things that we've seen before. I'm going to scroll down. Uh, and here are the assumptions for the startup cost. Again, we have seen this before. So uh, what we added here is based on our um, purchase assumption, we also need to figure out the depreciation. So different equipment has different depreciation terms. So leasehold improvement, so this is improvement to the building and it has a very long term. So uh, we have to depreciate the $50,000 over 39 years. So your annual depreciation is the value divided by the term. Uh, total office equipment is uh, $2,500 and $2,000, so that's $4,500. Organization costs, again, we need to sum up all the, um, among all the expenses that we have um, incurred before the company is launched. So accounting rule is such that before you launch a business, these are not expenses. You have to capitalize them. Capitalize them means that you cannot write off the entire $125,000 as your expense, but instead you have to um, depreciate that. So here are our um, total current asset. Um, total current asset is just a consumable, so those will not be um, depreciated. So here are our depreciation. In here, we have our total startup costs. So this will be uh, the equipment as well as uh, office equipment, leasehold, and current asset. So you need $282,775 uh, and uh, for depreciation, again, is the same, is some of this. And you have a total annual depreciation of $10,054. So here uh, are all the assumptions and also based on the assumption, we have computed our depreciation. Now we are ready to get started in creating our performance statements. To do that, we're going to switch to the next tab. So we're going to move to um, table 811 to 815. Uh, the, for those of you who are really interested in Excel, I'm going to show you the formula over here. Um, if you notice that the table title here includes the case. And if you click on this label, you'll see the formula on how I added um, the case to the title. So if you want to create a dynamic title, the way that Excel will combine different text string is the M% sign. So to show you something real quick, so let's say this is hello and this is world. If you want to combine the two, you use equal M% hello M% world. And that'll give you hello world. Now notice that is all um, string together. If you want to add a space, you can add an ampersand there um, and then add a space. And all strings has to be inside a, a set of quotation marks. So now you have uh, hello world with space. So that's just for fun. 
Now back to the serious business of creating your performance statement. Um, most of this information is either from the assumption area and also um, the structure of the income statement is the standard financial statement formula. So here I want you to uh, rather than just follow me along, take one moment to really uh, pause the video to fully understand why certain things are constructed the way they are because you will be uh, expected to create these performance statements on your own. Okay, so first uh, we know that, remember, we already computed the revenue for year one. So this we just, we just need to um, pick up from the assumption area. So that's foot in year one and we can, we can copy that for revenue and total revenue is just the sum of the two. Cost of good is equal to cost of, uh, of foot revenue times foot percentage. So that's 33.8% and cost of um, drink is drink revenue times cost of beverage. So that will give us the sum of these two. And those of you may, may remember, we've done something very similar in the last chapter. So this is um, a repeat of what we have already done. Next is wages. And again, in the assumption we have wages, this is a uh, number of hours per year. So we take the number of hours per year times the number, uh, the dollar amount per year. So we assume that this is going to, uh, that's our base year assumption. Okay. And for the owner, it is given as $60,000. And the total is just sum of the two. Uh, payroll tax is the percentage of wages. So that will be our uh, total wages uh, times the payroll percentage. So again, read the assumption, make sure you understand what is going on there uh, and why the formulas are the way they are. And employee benefit is given in the assumption area. And the sum of these total wages and, sell and benefits and that's our year one. Credit card charges, again, we've done this similar before, so I'm going to go over it relatively quickly, is based on our revenue. So we have, um, let's take a look at the assumption area. For credit card, um, is 2% of sales and is payable immediately. So. And we know that it is a percentage uh, of all our revenues, 40% is sold through credit card. So we have 2% on 40% times our total revenue. Okay. Advertising was a fixed assumption. So advertising is $500 per month. We are doing annual um, forecast, so we need to multiply that by 12. Uh, utility is similar. We have $1,000 per month, so that would be $12,000 per year. Insurance is $10,000 per year, so we do not need to adjust that. And licensing is $5,000, again, that's per year, so we don't need to adjust that. Account, uh, accounting is $200 per month, so again, we need to multiply that by 12. And supply is $5,000 per year. Next, we have rent. Rent is $5,000 per month, so we have to multiply that by 12. I think you you get the idea. Make sure that you pick you match the label and uh, the title, so you make sure that you pick up the correct uh, item. So workman's comp 
Uh, so let's take a look um, in here. Workman's comp is 10,000 per year. So again, we don't need to uh, make any adjustment and equipment leasing uh, is also 10,000, but make sure you pick up the correct uh, assumption. So total SGNA is the sum of all the ones that we just enter. And earnings before interest and tax is equal to revenue minus raw material minus labor minus SGNA. And you know, that is uh, $4,160. Depreciation and amortization, we actually computed that. Here, I want to uh, point your attention to something that's unique in Excel. So we have computed depreciation and amortization here is $10,534. This is a computed value. Later on, we're going to do scenario analysis with this um, model as well. And when you do scenario analysis, you cannot put formulas in there. It has to be a value. So I put the depreciation here um, as a dollar amounts. Uh, and this is uh, this is one of those special cases. And we have um, and the um, in this particular case uh, is unlikely for it to be different because the most uh, the the most largest degree of uncertainty comes from the future. For most business, the startup costs, once they um, committed to a particular approach, uh, the startup cost doesn't change. These are all expenses that they will have incur before they open the door. So depreciation is unlikely to change. So let's take a look. So let's pick up depreciation from here. And your earnings before interest and tax is going to be EBITDA minus depreciation. Interest expense here is actually dependent upon um, our financing assumptions. So here we actually need to pull from the balance sheet. Um, we have not completed that yet, and this is the, uh, but we will still use information from there. Uh, and once we have completed the balance sheet, then this will this um, you will pick this formula will give us the correct answer. So this is part of the simultaneous creation process. So interest expense in year one is equal to the interest rate, and we assume that that we can borrow at 6%. So this is from the assumption page. Make that an absolute reference. Multiply by, so let's go back to, let's scroll down to the income statement is gonna base on long-term liability. So the bank loan that we take out in the year before. And this is very important. Otherwise, you can, you'll create a circular reference. So what we're assuming is that we borrow all the money we need at the beginning of the year, the last year, and we'll pay interest on that. So the interest expense in year one is how much money we owe the bank at the end of year zero. Taxable income is EBIT minus interest and tax is equal to, and here um, you have to make uh, something that is unique for a startup because we don't have any income prior to year zero, we don't have any tax uh, loss to carry forward. So if we lose money, we don't, we simply don't pay tax in year zero. We don't have, um, we don't get a refund. Now we could take into account potential loss carry forward or backward. We're going to keep the model simple. We just assume that if we lose money, we don't pay tax. If we make money, we pay tax. Uh, to account for tax loss carry forward and back backward would make the model a lot more complicated. So to um, take into account the fact that we may not pay tax, we use the if function. So the if function here, it, what we want to say is that if the taxable income is less than zero, then we'll pay zero tax. Otherwise, otherwise we'll pay tax. So otherwise it's going to equal to taxable income times the tax rate of 25%. So you'll notice that right now is year zero. It is zero because we are losing money. And the net income is simply taxable income minus taxes. Okay. And for owner's equity, it is um, 
relatively straightforward. You start with zero, so net income in year one. Um, currently, we assume that dividend is going to be zero. Uh, this may change in the future, uh, but we're going to assume that is zero for now. In addition to retain earning is equal to beginning plus income minus dividend. Oh, I'm sorry. Addition to retain earning is net income minus dividend. And ending accumulated retain earning is beginning plus addition to retain earnings. So that's what we have for year one. For year two, uh, we're going to start um, incorporating our sales forecast based on the value in year one. So sales in year two is equal to sales in year one times one plus the sales growth. So sales growth for year two is 10%. The same thing for drink, reve drink revenue is going to increase by 10% in year two. And then in year three is equal to revenue in year two times one plus the growth rate for year three and year four, are both are going to be 7%. So I'm going to make that an absolute reference. And now I can copy this to the rest of year three and year four. Now, knowing when you can copy and when you have to enter this, the cells um, directly, that comes with practice. And I encourage you to uh, look at the formula and look at what will change, what will not change when you do the copying. Uh, total revenue, we can copy that over. So we have finished our revenue forecast. Uh, cost of goods sold, so let's take a look at the assumption. We know that cost of goods sold is always a percentage of food revenue and always a percentage of um, drink revenue. So when we created this two formula, we already take that into account. We make, we make the percentage the absolute reference. So the cost of goods sold, we already created a formula, which we can just copy that over. Next, we're going to go into wages. This is going to increase at a fixed percentage. So again, I um, encourage you to um, remember uh, to you may want to print it out or remember something that we've done in the last um, chapter is that we split the screen into two. So it's easier for you to see um, what each assumption is based on. So what we know, so as you go down here, is that we assume that wages for kitchen and waste staff and also employee benefits is going to increase at 3%. Okay, so let's incorporate that. So wages for kitchen and waste staff is going to increase at 3%. For owner, let's take a look. It says it's sixty thousand dollars per year. In fact, if you read the textbook, the textbooks assume that the owner is not going to increase is um, is take. And the reason is because if the own if business is what is doing well, the owner can always take dividend. Okay. So the total is still the sum of the two. And payroll tax, again, that's a fixed percentage. So if you look at this up here, payroll tax is 12% of wages and salary. So we already, we already have that in this formula, and we can just copy that over. Employee benefits, if you remember, that's going to increase at 3%. So we're going to pick up the assumption here. And the total is as before. So we have finished um, cost of goods sold. So these are the raw materials and also labor. Next, we're going to look at SGNA. Each one of these items is going to be different. So you want to pay attention to the um, description um, in the assumption area.
First up is credit card charges. This is based on revenue. So um, the formula remains the same is 2% um, on 40% of sales. So we can just copy this over. Next, we have advertising and utility. So let's take a look at the assumption area. We in here we said we we noticed that um, okay this is not wide enough so there there are other material there are other information there so let's make this a little bit wider so you can also okay so increases in advertising utility insurance licensing accounting and supplies so all those will increase by two percent per year. And then rent, workman's compensation, uh, and leasing and depreciation will not change. So one thing that you notice when you create a model, and if you know this is the case, you can arrange your model effectively for creating the formula. So notice that I have group advertising, utility, insurance, all that together. So all of this will have the same percentage increase. Um, I know this because I'm creating this model. In the future, when you're creating your own model and you know your assumptions, you want to arrange your model such that it matches your assumptions so that you can you can make the formula creation a lot easier. So advertising is equal to one plus. The assumption here is that you increase by 2% per year. And remember that this is going to apply all the way to through accounting and supplies. I'm going to make that an absolute reference. So I can copy this all the way through supplies. Again, this only works because I have created the model accordingly. Next, we have rent. And we know that rent is increasing at a different percentage. Again, here the information is given by the owner. So you, it really, really varies. So in here, he must the owner must have uh, negotiated a contract that enable him or her to not have to worry about increases in these items. So again, we can copy this over and we have finished the total SGNA. So the rest of this is, um, this formula remains the same, earnings before interest and tax. And also if you look at um, depreciation, depreciation uh, is gonna be the same each year. So um, actually is gonna, uh, remember depreciation, the assumption is that you will increase at 0%. So we can just copy the formula there as well. In fact, uh, we can copy the rest of this formula over to the next two years. And for the owner's equity, um, we just need to do the beginning balance. So beginning balance is the ending balance of the last year. Um, other than that, the rest of the formula is the same. So we can just copy this over. And we have completed the pro forma income statement and the pro forma statement of owner's equity. We'll end the video here. In the next video, we're going to continue with the remaining pro forma statements.